This video covers SVG text elements. The structure of this video is as follows. SVG revisited. SVG text elements. Adding SVG text elements. D3 and SVG text elements. D3 data and SVG text. The summary. All right, let's get started. SVG revisited. SVG is a vector-based graphics system. SVG is a family of specifications for creating vector graphics. Since vector graphics are not created out of pixels, they can be scaled up to larger or smaller sizes without losing image quality. The SVG system creates DOM objects for each graphical element. Things within the SVG viewport's dimensions are visible. Things inside the SVG tags, though outside the viewport dimensions, are not visible. SVG images and their behaviors are defined in XML text files. Since the DOM includes XML as part of the DOM specification, we can use the DOM to access and update the structure, content, and style of SVG images. This means that SVG elements can be styled using CSS just like HTML. So far we have covered the basic shapes that can be made in SVG. One very important part of data visualizations we have not covered yet is text. SVG text elements. Typography is the art and technique of arranging type in order to make language visible. The arrangement of type involves the selection of typefaces, point size, line length, line spacing, adjusting the spaces between groups of letters, and adjusting the space between pairs of letters. Additionally, color, readability, and legibility are important parts of typography. One of the most important parts of data visualization is text labels and axes. Text labels and axes help to set the ground floor of understanding. It tells us about scale, about relative scale, and it lets us figure out the space we are operating in. After all, if the graph or visualization is missing text, then it is very hard to read. This chart could be a great one if we were talking about the cost of a business going down. This chart could be a terrible one if we were talking about the number of kids who receive adequate nutrition. This chart could be misleading in that the amplitude of the y-axis could be statistically insignificant. This chart could be misleading in that the lowest x and highest x could be millions of years apart, whereas we only care about hourly increments. This chart could also be completely wrong if we had asked for a chart about the unemployment rate and this chart was about the number of clowns over the last century. Without text on the graph or chart, we are operating blind, which, as you can imagine, is not the goal of data visualization. SVG provides a keyword for defining a graphics element consisting of text. The SVG text element has attributes and properties that indicate things like the font specification, writing direction, and attributes for how to exactly render and paint the characters. Because SVG text elements are rendered using the same rendering methods as the rest of the SVG graphical elements, the same coordinate system, transformation, and etc. apply. The SVG text element renders the first character at the initial current text position. This position is defined by the X and Y attributes of the SVG text element. This tells us that the text will start to be drawn at point 50, 50 with the font sans serif and with the font size of 12. We can even apply rotation to each glyph of the text. Adding SVG text elements. Adding SVG text elements. Looking at the example again, Let's cover how to build the text element. We compare it with building a circle, something we already know how to do. First, we need to use the keyword text, just like the circles use the keyword circle. Next, we need to define the X and Y coordinates of where the graphics element is drawn from. In the case of the circle, it is the center point. In the case of the text, it is the bottom left corner. The radius tells us how far the circle goes out, for the text, we do not define this. It goes out as far as the actual words between the text tags go. One important thing to notice is that the text keyword has an opening and closing tag. The text inside of the opening and closing text tags is the actual text that is written out in the SVG image. This is important to keep in mind because so far we have just added attributes and values to the keywords and haven't specified anything inside of the opening and closing tags. Just like we can specify extra attributes to the SVG circle, like the fill color, we can specify extra attributes to the SVG text. 
The ones we focus on are the font family, the font size, as well as the fill. This tells us that the text will start to be drawn at the point 50 comma 50 with the font family sans serif with the font size of 12 and the fill color of red. We can thus write an HTML file as follows and the browser will understand it correctly. When we load this in the browser, we get the following. The purple circle shows up as we would expect. The red text shows up on the screen and is visible in the developer's tools element section. In this way, we can add text to our data visualizations to help explain and improve readability and legibility. The great thing about SVG is that all of the keyword elements are constructed the same. There are attributes and their values. As you can imagine, this makes it familiar, easy, and flexible when we go to add text using D3. D3 and SVG text elements. For SVG basic shapes, we already know how to add attributes using D3. Adding attributes and their values to make SVG text will be the same using D3. The one thing we need to cover is how to insert the text into the opening and closing tags. We need to tell D3 that we want to put the word circle into the SVG text example on the screen. This is the D3 text operator. If a value is specified, then it sets the text content of all the selected elements to the specified value. If the value is constant, then all of the elements are given the same text content. If the value is a function, then the function is evaluated for each element in order. Using the D3 text operator, we can set the text of the SVG text. Because the D3 text operator allows for constant values as well as functions that return a value, we can dynamically set the text content of the SVG text. Let's take a look at the JavaScript console to see how this works. We start with what we already know how to create SVG circles using D3 and data. First, we create the SVG container viewport. Then we append a circle to the SVG container. Then we add attributes to the SVG circle. In the circles case, we add in the CX, CY, radius, and fill to match the example we did above. The purple circle shows up as expected. Next, let's start with baby steps, adding the text keyword to the SVG container. Given how we added the circle to the SVG container, we can append the text keyword to the SVG container. The text keyword shows up as the last child element of the SVG container because we use the append. Notice that the opening tag and closing tag of the text SVG element are added for us. Next, let's add the X and Y coordinates. This tells the browser that the text will start at the point 50 comma 50. The text then expands to the right. Next, using the D3 text operator, let's add the word circle as a string. The word circle now appears on the screen. In the elements section of the developer's tools, you can see that the word was added between the tags. Though it was added with double quotations, the quotations do not show up in the SVG container. We can run the same command again with a different word now. The word data now appears on the screen. In the elements section of the developer tools, you can see that the word was added between tags. The D3 text command adds in the new text and replaces the old text. Let's change it back to the word circle and make the X and Y points 20 comma 20. It is now back to being the word circle. And the point where the text starts is the center point of the circle. You can see the word circle starts at the center point and moves to the right. One other thing to note is that the characters are drawn up in our regular coordinate space, not the SVG coordinate space. Let's move it back to the X and Y points, 50 comma 50, so we have a clear view of the text. We can see the SVG text word circle clearly. Now let's add in the font and font size. You can see that the font style changed as did the font size. One important thing to keep in mind when using font families is that if the user does not have that font on their computer, the browser will try to find an equivalent font. For this reason, it is best to stick to generic font family names like the sans serif in this example. The other thing to notice is that for the font size, we did not specify the units. D3 added the PX text for us. We can add in the PX ourselves if we want. It works the same way. Next, let's take a look at how we can use data to create SVG basic shapes and then add 
SVG text labels to those SVG basic shapes based on the data. D3, data, and SVG text. We define a data set that contains text and numbers. This data set is based on the top 50 largest cities in the world and their population as measured in millions according to Wikipedia. For now, we design a super basic data visualization. We will create circles where the radius is based on the population in millions. Then we will add the name of the city next to the circle. We position the circles on the graph based on their index number. To the JavaScript console. First, we define the data set. We will use this to bind each JSON object to each circle element. First, we start by adding an SVG container. This will contain all of the elements of the data visualization. Next, let's add circles to the SVG container and attach the data. The circles now appear. We check to make sure each JSON object was bound to each circle. The JavaScript object was bound to each circle. Next, let's use the objects to create the circle attributes. We position each circle according to its index, remembering that it is zero indexed. The radius of each circle is defined by the population. The circles now appear in the SVG viewport. The circles decrease in size as they go from left to right and from up to down. This is expected and it shows what we want, the relative sizes of the cities. However, as we covered earlier, without looking directly at the data, it is hard to know which circle pertains to which city. Let's add SVG text labels to each circle based on the data. We use the same D3 pattern as before, except this time, instead of adding SVG circle elements, we are adding SVG text elements. We bind the data set in the same way. Each SVG text element gets its own JSON data object. Each SVG text element gets its own JSON data object. We check to make sure each JSON object was bound to each text element. The JavaScript object was bound to each text element. Next, let's use the objects to create the text attributes. For the text elements, we first have to define where they live. This is defined the same way as the circles, according to the data index. This has given each text element the attribute and value to match the circle. Now we add the actual text based on the data's city name. Instead of a hard-coded value, we use an anonymous function to get the name from the data property. The name of each city appears on top of each circle, which solves the issue of knowing which circle pertains to which city. However, the text is black and the circle is black, so it's hard to read. Let's change the style of the text elements. The red label is now fully visible. Well, other than the fact that the text on the last two countries runs out of the SVG viewport dimensions and are thus partially hidden. We will come back to that later. For now, let's change the text of the circle labels to be the rank. Because the D3 text operator replaces the text, we can just call the text operator again with a function that returns the rank instead of the city name. The rank of each city is now visible, and because the font is still red, we can read it. However, without specifying what the number next to each circle means, we have no way of knowing whether it is a population or rank. Because we use a function to set the text, we can concatenate a string and a number to set the text to a better explanation. And there you have it. We used data to create SVG basic shapes and then added SVG text labels to those SVG basic shapes based on data. The summary. This video covered SVG revisited, SVG text elements, adding SVG text elements, D3 and SVG text elements, D3 data and SVG text, and the summary.